morning. How are we all doing today? All well? Great. So I know I'm the last speaker up here and you're already wondering what is she going to be speaking about, teen scenes. Well, yes, let's see what we have in store for you all today. So 13 is when you enter your teens. And I often wonder why is it considered such as, uh, you know, an unlucky number? It's a beautiful process. It's a beautiful change. A phase in time when various things we rearrange. Right? Knock, knock, knock. Shh. There's some visitor come to our door. Who are they? That's someone called Mr. P. Well, let's learn more about them. Come on, let's see. So the first visitor, as you enter your teens, all right, you have someone called as Mr. People Pleaser. So what does he do? You know, when Mr. People Pleaser knocks at our door, he brings us a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, a lot of tension and anxiety. When we are younger, before we hit our teens, right, uh, that's when we are, say, five, six, seven, eight, nine-year-olds also, we like to play with everyone. Right? We are not bothered about who's this, who's that, what is this girl doing, what is this boy doing, nothing. We are just wanting to play. Am I right? Yes. But the moment we hit that threshold of entering our teens, we want to feel a sense of belonging. We want to feel a part of a group. We want to feel accepted, not neglected. Right? So what do we start doing? Pleasing. We start doing things which are out of our comfort zone which probably we don't like doing, but because I want to get into that group, because it's the so-called HEP group, and I don't want to be called the uncool one, so I'll start doing things that start pleasing. I see that little smile on your face there. Yes? So yeah, we start doing that. But have you thought of it? What eventually happens? Negativity. We start feeling a brain drain. There is like a battle of emotions going in our minds and heart. Why am I doing this? What am I doing this for? So why? Oh, why? Well, it's time to say goodbye. Say goodbye to Mr. People Pleaser. He doesn't have to be knocking at your door anymore. Instead, what are you supposed to do? Start thinking. Take a deep breath. We all have our individual talents. We are all unique in our own special way. Right? We all have in potential. I'm sure the lockdown has given us millions and loads of you know, opportunities to think and you know, regain, recoup out of something. So find that hidden talent of yours, which is buried deep down. Find your uniqueness, find your strength, unlock it. And you'll see, automatically you'll be attracted. You'll attract that group automatically with your prominent personality. You don't need to be people-pleasing anymore. It's your charm, your uniqueness, and your individuality that will help you. And you know, as you grow older, as your friends, you know, your friend circle becomes smaller, do you think why? Just think about it. You're reaching towards your goal, your strengths, with your strengths, right? You will lose friends on your way. And that is why a Bugatti has two seats and a bus has 30. The next person who comes, she's Mrs. Fit knocking at your door. This lady gives me a major complex. She's nagging me all the time. Eat this, eat that, don't do this, don't do that. Oh, that's so much fat going down your waistline. Oh my God, and I go crazy, right? It's so there. We don't know what to do. We all want to hit the gym. We want to go for Pilates. We want to go for this class, that class, just to look good on the outside. The macho fit of having that perfect body. Happens, yes. And I am no, by no means saying, no, you're not supposed to hit the gym. Of course, a healthy mind rests in a healthy body. We have to exercise. But most important thing is to balance it out. I hear so many of my students say, oh, miss, today I went and did gymming for two hours. And I said, what about your homework? Miss, I forgot. I didn't have the time. So eventually what's happening is we are hitting the gym. We're doing all of that. But our personal life, family life is taking a back seat, right? We don't know how to cope further. And then a little inch gain, little weight gain, we go crazy. Oh my God, I've put on so much weight. I don't know what to do now. Why? Oh, why? Do not cry over these things. It's absolutely fine. What you need to do, stand in front of the mirror and say this. I am extraordinary. I am beautiful. I am handsome. Talking about handsome, you really want to be handsome? Lend your hand to some as said by Dr. A.P.J. Kalam. Because handsomeness is not about just looking good on the outside. 
It's how you contribute to society and make that person feel better on the outside. You automatically feel good inside. So lend your hand to some. And if you are born beautiful, that's God's gift to you. But if you live your life beautifully, it's your gift to God. Knock, knock. Well, now who's come to visit us? Well, it's Mr. Social Media. This guy is a lot of craze, I must say. I'm sure all of you back there agree to me, right? Agree with me. Mr. Social Media, a big craze, a big attraction. But you know what? This guy is causing a lot of distraction. Am I right? Yes? A lot, a lot of distraction. And the best part, Mr. Social Media comes with its accompanist, the filters. Right? Okay, we can look beautiful in a minute. Okay, no matter the dark circles are there, we can just remove all of it. Wow, I mean, that's so cool. I have nothing against Mr. Social Media. But you know, when sometimes I talk to my students or I ask people also around, what did you do the first thing when you woke up in the morning? I would expect, oh, you know, I had a glass of water, I did some yoga, I listened to some music. We checked our phones and I asked them, why did you check your phone? Oh, I had to see how many likes I got last night after the post, uh, picture I posted. Okay, so those likes, those comments become so important for us. And what happens to Mr. Social Media, no? He can't keep anything in his tummy. Earlier, before social media was much prevalent, we had secrets, right? We used to love to know a secret. And then we would say, shh, 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 don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone. But thanks to Mr. Social Media, his tummy is big. Everything has to come out. So people exactly know where you are going, what you are wearing, what you are eating, when did you have a glass of water, where did you check it? Everything is out. Now I want to ask you, is this really required? Do we really need to go all out there and let people know what you are doing and let your personal life out? And then, if you posted a picture and your friend got more likes with the picture he or she's posted and you didn't get that many, oh my God, stress and anxiety all over again. Why? Oh, why? Well, it's time to say goodbye. Not to social media. I know he's here to stay because it's a digitalized world. We all are going to be there. We see our parents on social media. Obviously, we are going to follow through. I'm not saying no. But rather think, take a breath. If that picture that you've posted is causing you negativity, it's giving you stress for the likes and the comments, especially if they're negative, okay, then I think it's time to change and rethink. What should I post? Why not post an inspiring quote that will motivate others? Why not uh, share maybe a sketch that you've made? It's okay, you will get comments on that also. But that's nothing wrong. People love to bring you down, that's absolutely fine. If you've read a book, why don't you give like a little, um, you know, uh, understanding about what you've read. Why not post those kind of things? Why your personal life all the time? And trust me, people read, but they may not like or comment. Honestly, it's their loss, not yours. That's the attitude you need to have. So don't bother about what people say and what they do. It's just you have to have that positive attitude. If people are bringing you down, think of this example. Look at a 2,000 rupee note. If I crumple it a bit, I crush it a bit, does its value diminish? Does it become 100 rupees? No. So similarly, in life, when you are faced with challenges, when a friend has said something, when people bring you down, you don't lose your worth. You don't lose your value. You are still there, what you are, and in fact, you further increase. All right? So don't lose that value. Every time you feel dejected, think of this 2,000 rupee note and crumple it. Next, let's see who's our next visitor, Mr. Status. So now when I hear the word status, again, the first thought that comes to my mind is brands, luxury cars, Starbucks coffee. I would prefer a Starbucks coffee over a filter coffee, which is just by the road downside or a cutting chai, though sometimes they taste much better than the Starbucks coffee. But again, it's all about status, right? So if I ask you, I'll give you two cotton shirts, sparkling, white, ironed, welly, well, and given to you. One is a branded one, one is a non-branded shirt. I remove the tags. Will you be able to identify which is a branded one, which is a non-branded one? Very rarely, I doubt. Okay, so that is why, that is why you have to understand that it's not just about the brand. It's how you feel when wearing even something which is non-branded. That reminds me of a joke. There was this famous comedian, of course, you all must be knowing who he is, Mr. Kapil Sharma. Okay, we all watch that. And he was sharing the platform with a very famous celebrity. The celebrity was asked, ma'am, where do you get your clothes designed and stitched from? So she named a famous celebrity designer. 
And then Mr. Kapil Sharma was asked, so where do you get your clothes stitched and designed from? So he said, the tailor next door. Immediately, everybody started laughing. To which Kapil Sharma replied, Wo celebrity designer thodi na kut kechi leke uske kapde kata hai. My point being, you can wear anything which is simple, but it's how you feel when you wear it. If you stand confident and tall, with that perfect attitude, grace and smile, the best outfits, even if it's expensive or not expensive, you'll look good in all of it. Now talking about smile, another thing that I would like to tell you, which I just remembered, I was wearing an expensive outfit and I clicked a picture very nicely, put it up on social media, posts, etc. The first comment I got from my family and my dear husband, smile please. I was like, okay, that made me think and realize that no matter the expensive outfit, but what was important is that smile, the right attitude. So next time, if you are having an argument of, you know, no, I don't want to wear an unbranded thing, remember G-A-S. Well, I know what else you could be thinking, not even the brand, but adorn yourself with grace, attitude, and the right smile. Let's see who visits us next. The last visitor that we have for today, Mr. Stress. Yes, I again see a lot of mumbling and murmuring happening over there because you can all relate to Mr. Stress who visits us. And why would I say only teens? It's all of us, even adults. We all go through stress. What do you want to make? Oh, for tomorrow's party, I don't have an outfit to wear. Exams are coming up. Mama is stressed. Papa is stressed. Everybody is stressed. Stress before coming and giving this talk also I was. It happens. We all go through that stress. But let's think of it. Is this stress going to enhance my output? Is this stress going to help me in any way? Then it's good. But if it's not helping, then why, oh why, it's time to say goodbye to Mr. Stress. But again, like I said, Mr. Stress is here to stay. All right? He's not going out of our lives. But now what the beauty is, we can change stress into something positive. Okay? So the biggest stress as teens, okay, as students that we have, exams. Okay? If exams are coming up soon, we are all stressed. Okay? I remember I used to put on weight because I would only eat, 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 eat. And everybody in my house knew Tasim has exams coming up. Okay, now let's not disturb her anymore. Okay? And I love to eat desserts at that point in time because stress spelled backwards is desserts, right? So, we all go through stress. But, let's cope with it. So that's the tactic I'm going to show you today. Okay. Follow the IPO cycle. Identify. Okay? You're going through stress. So in that, what's happening? You're going through various emotions, okay? You're having a lot of feelings going on, okay? There's anger, there is, you know, a lot of things going on in your mind. What is the most important thing to do is identify what you're going through. The moment you accept it, that yes, I'm very, very angry, I'm very, very irritated, you will have a sense of directionality as to what is the next step to be done. If I'm angry, I need to calm myself down because even if I open that book and sit with it for 10 hours, I'm not going to understand a thing because I am sitting with anger. So, first thing, identify the problem at hand. Next thing, prioritize. Now you know you have an exam coming up. Prioritize. I have only 10 days. I have three chapters to go. All right? What is the first chapter I'm going to take up? So, prioritize your work, what you are going to do. Next, you need to organize. Now, once that I know I have this chapter to be completed, it's a 30-page long chapter, I have to organize myself. I have this class, that class, this tuition, that thing happening. All of that left aside, I have to organize myself. I know it may sound cliche, but timetabling, scheduling works wonders. We have to do that. That's how you organize yourself. So, you got to pr identify the problem at hand, prioritize what's the next step forward and then organize what you're going to do. Remember, a pencil, take an example of a pencil. To be able to use that pencil, what do we do? We have to sharpen it. Keep sharpening, keep sharpening till it becomes a teeny mini little thing also, right? We'll use it till the end because we love that pencil of ours per se. Imagine if it was living. Imagine if that pencil was living and it was for real. The pain and stress it would go through every time it was sharpened. Our lives are similar. We also go through pain. We also go through stress. But ultimately, we're emerging as skilled individuals, and that's very, very important. So, let's see who were the five visitors that came. We had, of course, Mr. People Pleaser. We had Mrs. Fit. We had Mr. Status, Mr. Social Media, and Mr. Stress. 
These, of course, there would be more visiting us as we enter our teens and many more after that as well. But another typical scenario that I have often encountered and noticed is what I'm going to share with you right now again. When we are young, okay, again, the age bracket of five to maybe eight, nine, ten years, we want mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy all the time, right? Every time we are going and cuddling them, want to stay, you know, stay with them all the time, put my head in their lap, cry on their shoulder. There's no sense of awkwardness at that point in time. Mama, give me food. Dad, take me out for a drive. All that we do. Moment we enter the teen threshold, I don't know what happens. We start taking a little back seat for the simple reason because everything is revolving around friendship now. Because everything is friends, friends, friends. Starbucks is only to be visited with friends. Nah, we can't take our parents over there. What will my friend think if I go with my parents on a Sunday or if I go with my parents for a holiday? Sometimes this is a scenario that pops up in our minds. It may not be with everybody, but generally this happens many a times when you enter your teens. So here, what I would like to share is, again, there's nothing wrong with having friends and getting out with them, but it's important to again balance. If you enjoy that Starbucks coffee with your friends, I think we balance it out by even spending some time with our parents. Because what happens is, when we are perpetually on that phone, you know, texting, messaging, or you know, playing some games, we forget our parents are waiting to talk to us. They feel neglected at some point in time. So if at all, we've not given them that enough time, make sure you remove at least those 10, 15 minutes with your parents, grandparents, siblings, and enjoy that day with them as well. Because at, you know, at the end of the day, they do, they do feel dejected, they do feel sad, but not a word will they say, because your happiness means the world to them. And also remember, when you are upset, when you are sad, when you've got hurt, the first person you will run to is your parents, right? I don't think, very rarely will we call up a friend and say, hey, I'm hurt, come and meet me immediately. Very rarely, right? Unless parents are not in town. Yeah, so coming back, make sure we balance our friendship and, you know, family life and make sure both of them are going hand in hand. So on an ending note, as you mature into a teen, remember to add positivity perseverance and passion to your personality. Minus the stress, social media and inferiority. Status and symbols are all just wants. Towards them, give limited or the least amount of reaction or response. Multiply your strengths by understanding your uniqueness and individuality. Inspire, motivate and work for the betterment of society. Divide your weakness into brackets. Let one not overlap and come in the way of your progress. You are the best just the way you are, confident, bold, your own kind of awesome, forever a shining star with immense knowledge and power. And I'd like to just end with a very short uh, story that I just recently came across, Breaks in a Car. There was a professor who asked his students, why do we have breaks in a car? So the first student said, you know, to stop the car, to reduce the speed of the car, said another student, Another student said, to prevent it from colliding into something. And similarly, the answers came popping up and they were all around the same lines. The professor smiled and he said, can I give you my answer? The students were very excited. Yes, yes, sir, we want to know what you think. So he said, the brakes in the car enable us to move the car faster. Confused? Yes, so were his students. To which he said, now imagine I told you this car has no brakes. Would you even dare to drive that car out at a speed of 10 or 20 also? I doubt. We would not want to take that car out. But the fact that you know that there are brakes in this car, I will have the courage to speed and take my car move and move ahead with it, right? We would do that. So many a times, what happens is there are brakes in life. We encounter a lot of brakes in life. You know, people tell us something, friends say something, some negative thoughts, some negative comments come to us. And the biggest question, what do you want to become when you grow up? What is your pathway to success? All these questions pop up, right? Somewhere they make us stop. And we don't know what to do. We come at a standstill. But what about, how about rather, changing this into a support system? Let all these negative thoughts become something positive. Let that play as a catalyst to you to enable you to actually take that risk and move ahead faster. So they're actually giving you a push. No, how dare he said that to me? Of course I can do it. I will move faster. So what happens when these breaks come in life? What is happening is you take a step 
and you pause, you take a step back, and then it helps you to leap ahead. That is why the brakes help you to actually reach your destination faster, safely, and quickly. So on an ending note, I'll, keep, I'll leave you with some food for thought. The brakes in life, are you thankful for, or are you looking at it as a hindrance in your life? All the best, and thank you very much.